All right. Now, when I'm on products, it's not very obvious that I'm on products. So it would be really nice if when I'm on products, I know I'm on products. So if I view the page source here, again, I'll increase the font size. We'll notice that on products here, WordPress has very kindly added another CSS class, which is current page item. So if I style current page item, then products or any other navigational element will then appear as though it is the current page element. So let's go back to our CSS and I'm going to create another .nav li and then actually we can just do .nav and then current page item and I want it to look as though it's hovering so I'm just going to paste this in and if I refresh this that doesn't quite look right but if I add the A here there we go so what we're doing is we're saying that any hyperlink with current page item and is inside of nav should be styled in this way so when I click on contact contact will appear and then products and then about and if I click on my new template then none of them are highlighting so you can see it's very easy with a bit of CSS to take what WordPress gives us and make a very powerful navigation system. So let's create a couple more posts and see how WordPress can deal with that for us. So I'm going to go back to my WP admin section. I'm going to go back to write and I'm going to create some more posts. So if I go back to manage I should notice a whole bunch of different posts that have appeared. Now let's see how our site is holding up. If I go back to view site, we're starting to see quite a bit of content. Now we probably don't want all of this information to appear all the time, but we can actually change that in the settings. So let's go back to settings under reading and let's say that our blog page shows only the latest five posts and instead we show a summary. Now if I hit save again and I refresh this page, we'll see that we've only got the latest five posts, but there's no way to go back further into the history. So again, WordPress provides us some really simple functions to deal with this problem. I'm going to go back to my index.php file and we're going to take a look at the loop again. Now the way the loop is constructed right now is I've got this section here for a post and then an end while loop. So we've got a while and then an end while loop. Now in order to add what we really want to do now is add a link to any existing or old content. So I'm going to create a new div at the bottom of this called navigation. Now this is a different navigation class because it's inside content versus this nav class which is inside the header. So because it's imbe embedded or it's nested inside of another div, it's still easy to navigate it using CSS. And inside the navigation class, I'm going to create two more classes. One which is going to be a class equal to align left and another class which is going to be align right. Now these classes are very handy and we're going to write them very briefly just for styling or creating content that is either left or right aligned and in fact WordPress uses this when you're embedding images so that they're properly formatted. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open another PHP tag and in here and I'm going to close it and here we're going to say next underscore posts underscore link and then we're going to say older entries and then I'm going to close my function and then that's it and then I'm going to take this and then just paste it in here and say previous posts link and it's going to be newer entries 
Now if I go back with Firefox and I refresh, at the bottom I'm going to get this link for older entries. If I click on that, I'm going to get the older entries. If I click on this again, I'm going to get newer entries. Now, because we don't have enough posts yet, we don't see the two of them on the same page at the same time. So let's just add a couple more posts so we can see what that looks like. Now that we have at least at least 10 posts, we actually have 12 posts, if we go back to my new template and we visit the site and we refresh this, we'll see that we've got five posts here and then older entries and then we've got older entries and newer entries. Now I want these to appear on the two different sides of my template. So I'm going to create an align left and an align right class in CSS. So in style here, I'm just going to create a new block for generic styles. Again, you don't need to use comments, or you can comment them however you wish, whatever really makes sense to you. Align left will be float left, and align right will be float right. Now if I refresh this page again, we'll see that older entries and newer entries are now on the two different sides of this page. Before that, I'm going to create a new block here, and I'm just going to say footer, because I think this is more part of the footer. It's not part of the overall footer, but it's definitely at the base part of the page. And I'm going to say navigation, and I'm going to give it a height of, let's say, 30 pixels, and a background of off-white, and I'm going to refresh that. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a margin right of 10 pixels so it's properly aligned. We're getting a bit of alignment on the post itself. So I'm going to get rid of this margin. So on the post here, if you notice carefully, we've got a 10 pixel margin on top of another margin. And I'm just going to fix that by, in my post here, saying padding, or rather margin left, is 0 pixels. Because we already have a margin of 10 pixels in our content. So we've got a margin on top of a margin. And there we go. And the last thing I'm going to do here is just say margin right is 10 pixels for our footer navigation. So everything is properly aligned. Now I think there should be a bit of padding so that things aren't totally hugging and we've got older entries and newer entries. So everything looks like it's properly aligned. I can go to newer stuff and I can go to older stuff. And if you want to change what's in the text box, you just have to go into next post links, and then the argument can be a different bit of text if you want. I'm going to add a greater than symbol. So this is another way of saying greater than. And I'm going to add, or rather, a less than symbol. And this is a greater, this is a greater than symbol. And this is a less than symbol. So if I refresh that, now I've got older entries and newer entries. Perfect. So in the next video, now that we've looked a little bit at the loop, we're going to get ourselves a nice sidebar, or the starts of a sidebar, and we're going to refine our template a little more. We're also going to be looking at how we can style pages differently in the videos to come. Thanks for listening.